is very fair. So, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. So the conditions of salah, it's very important um, so to understand the importance of learning the fiqh uh, and the conditions of salah. Uh, we also un need to see the, the, during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when anyone would accept Islam, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially in Medina, uh, we, we, we also spoke about the hukum of salah, that when salah came uh, after mi'raj and the, the more details of salah, came in the life of Medina. When Prophet ﷺ made hijrah to Medina, the famous hadith of Prophet Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli, pray as if you have seen me praying, that also came in Medina. So this is where the details, so the 10 years of Meccan time, but then in the, 20, uh, in the 13 years of Medina, where all, most of the ahkam of deen, ahkam meaning the rules and the jurisprudence of Islam, of our deen, of the whole Sharia came in Medina time, right? Including Salah, and our, our topic is Salah. So let's stay focused. This is very important dars today. So mashallah, we have about 16 some people watching on live. So if you have any questions, uh, please type it up. I will try my best to answer. But remember, uh, as always, our questions to the uh, should be related to the topic, of, or more specifically, more related to the discussions of today. Salah is a very broad topic and inshallah we'll cover from sections to sections but today inshallah I've, uh, I, I'm planning to uh, uh, speak about the uh, faraid, uh, sorry, the conditions, prerequisites of salah. Uh, there are uh, you know seven or nine depending on how you see it uh, but if you categorize the clothing into one there are seven prerequisites of salah uh, without which we cannot pray salah. Uh, first and foremost, as we all know, and we spoke about this in, in Wudu and Tahara as well, is your body needs to be clean, need to be ready to perform prayer, right? Uh, this would mean that you need to be in the full condition of Tahara, that you should not be in, uh, in Janaba, that the condition of Janaba is where you cannot make Wudu, rather you have to take shower. Again, I don't want to go in detail, mashallah, we have covered it. If you need to go in, into, if you want to see the details of the Tahara, you could go back and listen to the other uh, lecture series, inshallah. So the body needs to be clean, number one. Body needs to be clean, that means not only the body is clean, we also have Wudu, and there is no Najasa in the body, and spiritually body is clean, meaning the Wudu is also there. Number two, the clothing that we are wearing needs to be clean. And you know, this is important because at times uh, outside our clothes are okay, but um, you know, the under, undergarments or underwears, may be, you may have a drop of urine that came out, right? So that means that would make that body, body part and that clothes impure, through which we cannot pray salah. So we need to be cognizant and mindful that our body, then our clothes are, are clean. Then number three, the third condition of prayer. So body it needs to be clean, the clothes needs to be clean. The third condition is the place where you're praying is clean. Uh, the, the very important and the famous hadith of the Prophet Jualat Ardi Masajiduna, Aw Kama Qala Sallallahu where he said that Allah has made the earth clean for me to pray and for my ummah. The explanation, the fuqaha explained explain that, of course, it's, it's clean in a sense that we could pray anywhere, which was not given to the previous ummah, right? Uh, we could pray anywhere. We could pray out in the parking lot. We can pray in the grass, all right? As long as there is no apparent uh, filth or, or, or there is no apparent dirt which will not allow us to pray. Dirt doesn't mean dirt, uh, what do you call something which is natural, but rather if there is no uh, uh, impurity, right? So if you know that um, a child has urinated on the piece of the carpet, uh, and you know it's there, you have seen it, you could smell it, uh, and you know it, so there you cannot pray. So therefore the area that you are praying, that's why the whole concept of uh, musalla or sajada came, where we as Muslims, we designate, we put down something that is clean to pray on. Um, that's number three, the place of uh, what we are praying. Number four is satar. Satar, or in Arabic also known as awra, is your uh, minimum requirements of covering. Minimum requirements of covering, that's number four, uh, is 
these are the portion that needs to be covered at the time of prayer bare minimum for men uh, it's from navel to that until the knee includes the knee so this is our satr uh, and this needs to be covered and at the time of prayer this needs to be covered uh, and i'll come to this and mashallah um, it's a very sad state that uh, at times our men mashallah especially in the masjid we wear you know nice jackets and hoodies and you know pants but we wear our pants so low and our shirts are short short that actual portion of satar you know what i'm talking about that portion of satar is open so the, i mean i don't want to go into too much of rulings and details because that will come up later on but if during salah if during salah we are covered if during salah my satar is opened up for one arkan, meaning uh, f for a point where you could say subhanallah or tasbih, subhan rabbi al-ala three times, right? For that portion of time. If it came up and you quickly covered it, it's okay. But if it's open for that long, then your salah is uh, invalid. That you, 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 I mean, you have to repeat your salah. It will break your salah because that's a condition of salah. Do you understand? So we have to be mindful. And for men, again, we are trying to go speak, touch on the basics and we'll go in detail. Uh, I see, mashallah, there are some questions. Let me quickly finish the seven main points and then we'll take some questions. So number four is your satar, your bare minimum should be covered. For men is from, uh, from navel uh, till knee. Again, there's a difference of opinion. Uh, according to Imam Abu Hanifa, it includes the knee till the till the till uh, covering till the bottom of the knee uh, f uh, and then according to the other ulama it is till the knee that would include even in the middle of the knee uh, very slight difference of opinion but again it's best to be uh, more precaution uh, precautious for sisters the aura and satar is different there's a whole big argument but the bare minimum at the time of salah that they have to have is they have to have their hair covered even if they're praying in seclusion right even if they are praying alone, again, this is the requirement uh, by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hence is, uh, a, 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 um, the, the, the need or a requirement for salah for the sister is their the hair and everything except their face and their, um, uh, their hands, uh, which will be by their wrists and their uh, ankles and their feet can be not be covered. Everything else needs to be covered. So that's why uh, our sisters, they wear their abaya or they would wear their scarf that will cover. So these are the requirements for salah. Uh, and if, uh, if, if, the, if, if the satar is exposed, I mentioned uh, the, uh, the, the, the ruling that if it's exposed for three tasbih or more, then it will break your salah. So we have to be mindful. Uh, so that was number four. Number five is when the condition of the prayer is that we have to pray in it in the time you have to know the time you have to be aware of the time in which we are praying so alhamdulillah some of us we prayed isha salah here others are praying uh, at your uh, in your masjid uh, sorry at your home so when you are praying you need to be mindful that we are praying isha salah in the masjid if your intent if your intention is asar salah or maghrib salah and you're praying in the time of isha then it doesn't count so that is one of the conditions that you need to know what time you are praying and it's the right time for the prayer. Number five. So number six is tawajjuh ila al-baytullah. Right? Your qibla, your wujuh. Your face needs to be facing towards the qibla. And I will, we could go in more detail of each of these points. What does qibla mean? What is the uh, you know, northeast from here and how it is? And, and the hill and outside. Are we really focusing on Kaaba? or towards Baytullah or is it the surrounding and the direction of that but nevertheless that's a condition uh, if we are out in the woods we need to find out where is the sun is rising and where the sun set we find out where the north is and northeast direction is a condition of salah and that's number six uh, and number seven is your intention that you cannot be a ghafil of you're just doing some arkan you but you don't know what you are doing it doesn't count so that's why even the salah when you know some of us um, who are taught in, in the subcontinent may also recite in the Ibrahim is the dua of the Quran or they may even say verbally in English or Urdu or any other language that I'm praying this for Rakat, Aishan, Salah, 
uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facing the Kaaba or you know my face towards uh, the, the Kaaba Allahu Akbar so that either verbal or uh, mental intention needs to be there that you are praying this Salah if that's not there for example hypothetically if a person is uh, sleepwalks and sleep actions right if he or she does some all the arkan without the intention then the Salah is not counted so these are the uh, seven principles conditions of Salah inshallah we have a question uh, does having clean clothing include uh, not having pictures of a human slash cartoon slash animals on this uh, or th this is permissible mashallah um, clean cl uh, clean cl uh, sorry clean clothing uh, would actually uh, means that um, uh, the, the, the clothings are clean right uh, I mean they do not have any najasat ghalida or khafifa it does not have any impure uh, big impurity or small impurity on it because the, clean, the, the, the clothes are clean uh, and um, but if you do but if you have pictures and images uh, that's a whole different perspective that you know who are we praying for and you know is it even allowed to have pictures in general so that is why there's a whole different condition that um, you know when we are praying there shouldn't be any image of someone uh, that you're praying towards Right? That's why even if someone's praying, we shouldn't be uh, you know, walking past, have a sutra. Or if you're praying, if there is a, a statue or an image or a picture of someone, we should not try to pray towards them because that is tashbih. That, you know, it sort of resembles as if you're praying to someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so the, the whole uh, issue of if a person has a, um, you know, a, a picture or a cartoon or animal on them, uh, then is a salah accepted or not? So it does not follow in this condition of the clean clothing, uh, and uh, you know you. It's very difficult to say the salah is not accepted, but definitely something which is not advisable, and we should not be doing that, right? Uh, because you are actually having. I mean, we have seen. I have seen this where where, where even young kids they would have a picture of uh, uh, of wrestlers. Or you know some other uh, celebrity or, or sports uh, athlete, uh, and then you know you're praying salah with them. It's 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 you know at most disrespectful that you are you, we we want to build that khushu. Even if there are kids, we have to remind them that these are not the way. You could, I mean, if someone wants to wear it, uh, of course it's not the best thing to wear. But if they're wearing outside, that's fine. But in salah, we need to sort of give importance to the salah and not uh, you know wear those kind of clothing that will. Um, uh, th that will distract and not just yourself but also others inshallah um, the the second point uh, what if you're wearing a jersey that has a logo of a bird again um, you know for example if it's a polo or any other brand that has a small logo of a thing you know um, we also do not want to make things you know over complicated and difficult for oneself right uh, if there's a logo and you can't really see and it, you know it, you know in, in, in the hindsight that in, in reality that was a big logo of a picture of a bird or a, a person playing polo uh, but you could hardly see or make it out it may be okay but again the whole point is uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and istafta qalbik you know ask your heart is it really your intention to uh, you know um, have that uh, you know is, is that something that is uh, disturbing you and others if it's not then it may be okay but uh, to have a big image with the pictures and, and especially the eyes are visible it is strongly advised that we should not be wearing those things because it is something uh, that is not uh, uh, recommended or even strongly condemned while well at the time of salah um, so now in prayer so once you so once you have these conditions uh, met uh, then we will do what are the conditions in prayer when I, when you actually s start salah what are the must things that you have to do and if you don't do then sajda sahu meaning the, uh, the, the 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 makeup or or, or to uh, do the uh, the, the sajda sahu is where you make one salam or even two salams and you make offer two, uh, two sajdas to show that you have compensated to complete the salah. Even that is not allowed. So what are these uh, you know, conditions and the pillars of salah? There are six of them. Uh, because without which you cannot complete a salah inside. 
So if you're prior to Salah, if the conditions are met, now when you're actually praying Salah, the first and foremost is Takbir At-Tahrim, right? Takbir at tahrima without which you cannot enter Salah. You cannot just come and go in Sajda and say you have started the Salah. If the Imam is in Sajda, of course you have to go there, but you have to make Takbir at tahrima Allahu Akbar, and then you join. So that becomes the first condition in Salah. So there were the seven outside Salah for you to be fit or to qualify to, be, to, pray, to pray. Now that you have qualified the preconditions, then in Salah, the requirement is you have to do Takbir al-Tahrima, number one. Number two, Qiyam. Meaning standing up and praying. Um, if you cannot stand, obviously you could sit down or lay down, but that portion, meaning that Rukun, uh, that section of Salah is requirement. You cannot just say Allah Akbar and go in the Ruku and skip that, right? Uh, of course, when you are praying behind the Imam, it's a whole different condition. We are talking about two rakat salah. Our whole explanation of today's will be about two rakat normal salah in firadan alone. When you are individually, when you are praying, so qiyam, qiyam is standing. When you are standing, uh, portion where you recite the Quran, the qiraat. That's another. That's a third condition. But qiyam itself is a second condition that is a requirement in salah. Number three, as I mentioned, is Qira'at. Qira'at means uh, recitation of the Qur'an. So again, as people who would accept Islam during the, Prophet, during the time of Prophet uh, not only they are taught how to pray, but also they are taught some portion of the Qur'an. Starting with what surah? Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha, La Salata Illa Bi Fatiha Til Kitab is a famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Salah without Surah Fatiha is not, you know, it's not, it won't be accepted, accepted. Why? Because it's not possible. Every rakat you have to read Surah Fatiha. So that is why, uh, so that's a third condition that you need to have at least some recitation of the Quran. Now, what happens to a person who just accepted Islam? Of course. They would still try to pray Salah and whatever they know, they will say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah until they learn. Uh, once they learn, uh, for example, for those who have learned, you cannot pray a Salah without reading anything in it, without reading any portion of the Quran. This is now speaks about the maqam and the importance of Salah. So far we have addressed the three conditions of in Salah. Number one is that we need to have Takbir al-Tahrima. Number two is standing portion. If you if you cannot able to stand, but you could sit, but that qiyam qiyam is not just standing, literal meaning is standing, but the portion of salah in which you 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 uh, are standing in normal circumstances, or the one right after uh, takbir al tahrima. So that is a condition number two. Number three is the qiraat, meaning the recitation of the Quran. Uh, number three, uh, number four is ruku, that section that that rukun uh, in which. After uh, you're done with Qiraat, you go and you bow down. If you're not able to, obviously, ishara or, or indication towards that is also accepted. But that rukun, that section needs to be completed. Likewise, number five, sajda. Right? Uh, a salah cannot be, you cannot call uh, you know, a salah if there is no sajda in it. Uh, and, uh, and for any, for, for any uh, salah, whether if it's two rakat, three rakat, or four rakat, the last akhri qa'da. Qa'da is where you're sitting down, tashahud, and after that. So if you miss that akhri qa'da, then the salah is not accepted. So that is a condition of the salah. In the two rakat, it's a one that you sit down for tashahud in second rakat. In third, in three rakat salah, like maghrib, it's the third rakat sitting down. And in four rakat salah, it's the last one. So that's qa'da akhira. Now. I'll speak about that. That comes in the wajibah that some, yeah, Surah Fatiha. Uh, and what if you don't know anything else or if you don't know any other Quran uh, besides Fatiha, right? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I will answer that in wajibat. What are the uh, most strongly desirable acts? And again, the Hanafi school of thought, the difference of opinion regarding Surah Fatiha and any Qiraat, I'll, I will explain that in a minute. So number five condition while in Salah is uh, Qaida Akhira, the last Tashahud. 
of any rakat. And the last one is salam. You have to have salam, at least one salam, in order for you to exit the salah. You cannot just, you have recited, you, you start the prayer, you did the qiyam, the ruku, the sajda, the qaida akhira, and you just get up and leave. The salah will not be counted. You have to exit the salah through salam. And even if you make one salam, it's okay. You will be counted as if you have exited. And, and according to Imam Malik, rahimahullah, um, you can only do one salam and then leave. So uh, it, it's funny. Um, if you actually make some of the Maliki scholars are of the opinion that you only do one salam. Okay? So I know this friend of mine, mashallah, hafidhullah, uh, he was leading a prayer. He's a Maliki uh, scholar. And, and he strongly believes that this is uh, the position of Imam Malik's, one of the ruling he follows. That after, you know, he recites the shahwad and, and salawat and the dua, then he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And that's it. <laughs> so there are a lot of people praying behind him. And they don't know this masala. <laughs> So they're all waiting. <laughs> they're waiting for the Imam to make second salam. But they're all like, and the Imam just got up and left. And they're like, what happened? <laughs> so it's completely okay. The salah, the salah is accepted and you have exited the salah. Just like how the first condition was entering salah through what? Takbir al-Tahrima. So you have to exit salah with at least one salam. Right? According to many of the scholars and the ulama uh, and the fuqaha is that you have to exit with both. But one is minimum requirement. Again, we are talking about the most needed um, requirement for salah. Again, we have covered a lot. I think I also see a lot of questions. We covered the seven requirements to pray salah. And then once you actually are praying salah, there are six conditions that you have to complete in order for your salah to be completed. And again, the, the, the seven before salah is your body needs to be clean, your clothes needs to be clean, and the floor on which you are praying, that needs to be clean. Uh, and then your uh, satar, meaning your aura, uh, your, your body needs to, the clothing should be covering uh, for the requirements for brothers will be from uh, navel to knee, and for sisters, everything except their face, their, their hands and their feet uh, needs to be covered. And then the time that you are praying needs to be correct, and number six, the qibla, the direction needs to be right. And number seven, it's your intention, that you need to be mindful uh, that you're praying salah. And there are six conditions uh, that are, you know, that we need to fulfill in salah, meaning these are the conditions of salah. Number one, takbir al-tahrima, to enter salah. Easy to remember, takbir to enter and salam to exit, right? And then the main arkana, which is qiyam, standing, ruku, sajda, and qaida akhira, the last sitting uh, in, in salah. There are a few questions, inshallah. So these are very important and we should teach our children. Seven before salah, <clears throat> six, uh, six in salah. Uh, we have a question. Oh, this is a very, very common question. Uh, someone asked, what if someone forgets and end up doing five rakat salah, right? Um, or someone, you know, this happens. Uh, what if you're praying and you think um, you're praying Isha Salah or, or Dhuhr Salah and then you only pray three rakat because you get confused, right? <laughs> People, it, it happens. Uh, and before I answer that, because um, it's a very common question, let's try to identify why this happens and how can we correct that. And then I'll speak about the ruling, what if it happens, right? Uh, so the person who asks this question and others, uh, it usually happens when our mind is running around all different directions. And this is the condition uh, of our salah that the moment we say Allahu Akbar, what it should happen is we should not think of anyone other than Allah, right? That is the best way and that's the ideal and that's what is expected. But what really happens, unfortunately, is that the moment we say Allahu Akbar, we think of everything other than Allah. Right? We think of everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it, it is very sad. Actually, a, uh, there is uh, 
No, no, it's not about you uh, or the person who's weak. It's, it's, con it's, it's, a, it's a sad affair of the whole Muslim ummah. And we all need to fix it. Actually, there's a funny thing that happened. I'll say that um, this, you know, my teacher in South Africa, he was reminding of this story. Uh, he told us this story that in, in a big gathering of Ishan Salah, and the, the Imam prayed Salah, and then he made, he made Salam. Sometimes even Imams make that mistake. It happened to me once in Maulin, in my previous masjid, that I prayed Salah, and there was some argument happening before Salah, and then the, the, the Adhan was called. I'm like, all right, let's go, everyone. Let's go, let's go pray. Sometimes if, you, if your mind is not in it, then you quickly offer the first two rakat, it was Ishan Salah. First two rakat was easy, because obviously you recite. <laughs> then in your third rakat and fourth rakat, I'm sitting down in my sajda, I'm thinking, Ya Allah, is this fourth or third? And there are a lot of people behind me. Then I tried my best. It was a long sajda. <laughs> then I'm like, inshallah, I, I have a strong feeling it's fourth. But you know, when, you, when you're actually leading prayer, it's a huge responsibility. <laughs> if you're praying alone, you don't know. And you may make taharri, meaning educated guess, a hypothesis. And then you, you may even make up. But then you have 50, 80 people behind you and they're like, what is this Imam? He doesn't know what's happening. <laughs> so what happened after, then I just sat down. It was actually the fourth, but I, was, I still had that doubt. Then I made salam, then I looked around. And no one had that question. <laughs> then I said, oh, alhamdulillah, it was four. And this other time I did that, I made salam and immediately a person behind me said, subhanallah, actually before even salam, the moment I sat down, he said, Subhanallah. So he, they reminded me, I got, got up because I was sitting down on the third rakat. Anyways, this, uh, this funny story, uh, listen, uh, it is quite funny actually. So in the masjid, an argument happened after Imam made salam. Imam was confused if he prayed three or four. And some people also in the musalli were confused. <laughs> Even they were not paying attention. So this one brother, he said, Imam, Wallahi, you prayed three. And he was like, MashaAllah, I mean, how do you know, uh, Shaykh? I mean, brother, you are so confirmed, you know, where others are all confused, even Imam is confused. So he said, no, I know this for sure that you only pray three. He's like, why? Why is that? Why are you so firm? He said, this is, I'm a businessman for you. <laughs> he said, I'm a businessman and I have four stores. And every day I come for Isha because in each rakat, I take hisab, I take accounts <laughs> of each store, one of my stores in each rakat. So today, I only took three accounts, three of my stores. You are missing the fourth rakat, so we have to pray again, subhanAllah. So this is the condition, my friends, that unfortunately in our salah, we think of the worldly things, because of which we miss the rakats on, on, on what we are supposed to pray. So the best way, before I answer the question, the best way is clean your heart. And if you know if this is something that's happening a lot, then speak to yourself. It's called self-talk. Self-talk is also a counseling skill. It empowers you. Self-talk to say, inshallah, I will pray. I will not make a mistake. All, that's all you have to do. You, before you come, while you're praying alone, inshallah, I will not make a mistake. Inshallah, I will read Surah Al-A'la and Surah al Ghashiyah in my rakat. Inshallah, I will pay attention to everything. So if you talk and plan for it, Inshallah, it will not happen. Number two, my teachers always used to say that when you're making wudu, bring the concentration in wudu. Don't waste too much water. And we went in all the details and think about all the sunnah acts of wudu. Because it's wudu is, has khushu and concentration, then Inshallah, it, that wudu will have impact on your salah. And then in your salah, now what happens if that mistake happens? That you are in that qaida akhira, you're in your sajda, but you're not sure you are have to, if you have to stand up or not. You have to stand up for fourth rakat, or this is my fourth rakat. At that point, I used this word earlier, it's called taharri, your best educated guess. That you know what? I have a strong feeling this is my fourth rakat, and then stick with it. The moment you feel, a strong inclination of four or three. If it's three, if that's your strong inclination, stick with it and then Bismillah.
Don't let thoughts and waswasa come and disturb you. What if a person say, you know what, Sheikh, it's just impossible. I just have this 50-50 chance, uh, you know, 50, uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, understanding that it's either 50% uh, inclination towards this or that. Or I have already prayed and I realized that I have already stood up and this is my fifth rakat. What do I do in that condition? So if, if, if you just cannot make up your mind, then the ulama, they say that select the lesser number. Select the lesser of the two options that you have. Let, let's say if, if you are thinking if it's three rakat or four rakat, if you just do not know, if you're not inclined towards one or the other, then just take three rakat and then act like you're praying and stick with that. Don't let now shaitan come and make waswasa. Now what if you did four rakat and you stood up and you stood up for fifth rakat while you're praying then you just realize that you know what I already prayed third and fourth this is my fifth rakat what am I supposed to do now immediately sit down if you're, if you're in the qiyam immediately sit down for tashahud because there's no five rakat salah and, and pray your uh, do your tashahud uh, at tahiyyat salawat and dua and make one salam actually not uh, salawat just at tahiyyat make one salam and do sajda as sahu and complete your salah. What if the question, again coming back, what if you forgot and you already prayed all five rakat salah? If you prayed all five rakat salah and then you got up from your place and you turned away, at that point you have to repeat your salah because there is no five rakat salah. But again, if you, if you are in your fifth rakat, you're already sitting down, then you realize, Ya Allah, this is my fifth rakat salah. At that point, you could still do sahu if you have not completed your salah. Even if you made salam, if you're still sitting where you are facing the qibla, you still, and you have not talked to anyone, you have not done those things that will break your salah, then you could still make such a sahu and it will consider as something that is accepted. But the moment you walked away, at that point, what if you forgot and uh, you end up doing five rakat of salah, then you do have to repeat that salah, inshallah. Uh, we can quickly go to the wajibat of Salah. Uh, it's 8.55. I will quickly answer uh, Brother Ashik's uh, question that Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, you know, if, in the Qiraat of, of the Quran while you pray, is Surah Al-Fatiha a condition or, um, you, know, you know, any other Surah uh, or any other, other portion of the Quran? So the, the Hanafi school of thought uh, says that the condition, the, the, the sixth condition of salah, salah, if a person does not know Surah Fatiha of, or for some reason if that person missed the sal, uh, missed Surah Al-Fatiha, the salah will be accepted but it will be naqis, it will be as if it's incomplete. So it will be ada, it will be uh, accepted without full reward. So that person is better that they repeat that salah. Um, but if, but from the wajib. So in the Hanafi school, and this is the difference that people uh, often, if they if they, if they uh, follow, if they see the differences of, of ulama and, and and the fiqh, is that Hanafi school of thought have that condition or, or another added uh, concept of importance called wajib. So wajib, in the wajib parts of the salah, according to Hanafi school of thought, it's Surah Al-Fatiha, that. It is very, very important, and if you don't, and you know, it's not the complete acceptance, but it will still be accepted at a very minimum uh, grant. According to the Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, it's, it's no wajibat, it's rather, it's either, if, either is it accepted or not. So they say if a person misses Surah Al-Fatiha, the Salah is not accepted, khalas. So according to Hanafi school of thought, it will be accepted, that's why you have now the conditions, uh, like, uh, that another wajibat of the of the um, of the salah is to recite the portion of the Quran in the first two rakat of the fard salah, right? These are the wajibat. If a person doesn't uh, do it, uh, then so, still salah will be accepted, but it will be naqis, uh, incomplete. So al fatiha is another one, uh, and to have uh, tartib, tartib. Like for example, in 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 the first rakat. If, you're, if you have selected a, a section to recite from uh, Surah Baqarah, the next rakat you could read anything after that, right? Uh, but if a person recites Surah Al-Nas in the first rakat and Surah Falak 
which is before Surah Al-Nas in the second rakat, that is something that is makru. And uh, according to Hanafi school of thought, that is, uh, you ha it's important that you repeat the salah. But it will be accepted, just like that, what I said. Um, so these are, again, I, I, I will quickly go through the wajibat. Again, if you have any questions, we can do so. Uh, and inshallah, if not, we will go into the actual uh, performance of the prayer. Uh, that I will do next week. Next week, we'll actually, instead of sitting, I'll stand up and we will go through the, each arkan of the salah. It's important what we recite and how our postures are. And also, I, we will speak about the difference of, opi <coughs> difference of opinions according to different ulama uh, with regards to some of the arkan, some of the actions that we need to do in the uh, different uh, postures of the salah. But as far as the wajibat of the salah, as, as I mentioned, the, uh, th that the, the sequence is wajib of, uh, in salah, uh, that you would have uh, qiyam, then ruku, then sajda, that you don't mix uh, that up. And these are, of course, very important uh, aspect uh, that you have jalsa between the two sajda that you sit down and ta'adil arkan ta'adil. This is a very uh, important. Let me finish this and I'll speak about ta'adil arkan and we'll end the session today, inshallah. Um, and tashahud at least once in the two rakat. So this is also wajib of salah that in the four rakat salah that you sit down after two rakat. After two rakat, the tashahud, that is wajibat. If you don't do that, again, salah may, may be accepted, but a very minimum uh, acceptance, right? It's, uh, it's important that we repeat the salah if you miss that. Uh, but if you don't, the salah is still accepted, again, with a very minimal uh, reward. Uh, and um, to, 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 again, the, the wajibat of salah for Eid is to uh, say the takbirat. Now let me uh, speak about ta'adil arkan. Ta'adil comes from the word adil, insaf, justice to your arkan, to the different postures. And this is wajib of salah. According to some ulama, this is a far, this is a condition of the salah. That if a person does not do proper justice of, of each rukun, of each posture, then salah is not accepted. What it means is, that you stay in that position for at least one tasbih subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allah akbar or even subhanallah so you're not constantly moving if that happens the salah is not accepted and this actually uh, comes from a very famous hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where prophet sallallahu was sitting with a sahaba a companion came and he went there and he prayed his salah this was a, mashallah, beautiful practice of the companions that anytime, even if Prophet ﷺ was sitting in the masjid, they would go there, pray to Rakat Salah, and then come and sit. Tahiyatul Masjid, the honor of the masjid. Of course, you cannot doubt the Fard Salah. Sahaba would always there for Fard Salah. Let's say Prophet ﷺ is sitting and giving a dars at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? Sahaba would come and offer to Rakat Salah and then come back here. So Prophet is speaking to the Sahaba and giving his dars and he sallallahu alayhi wa his shan, his, his vision, his uh, you know, concern for the ummah. As he's speaking, he noticed that Sahabi came and he prayed salah and he came, sat down. As he's speaking to others, he said, you know what? Qum fasalli. Go back and, and pray again. فَإِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَلِّي Because you did not pray. Sahabi said, Al-Amru فَوْقَ adab." Your command is more important to me, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes back, he prays, and he comes back. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Get up, go back. Fasalli fa inna kalam tu salli. Because you have not prayed. Meaning your prayer is not accepted. Second time, he prays and he comes back. The Prophet Sallallahu tells him the same thing. Get up and go pray because your prayer is not accepted. He prays and he comes back. At that point, he says, The Prophet of Allah, tell me what I did wrong. Because I am a student, you are my teacher. Uh, I will try my best to follow your teachings. I will do what, whatever you tell me. Prophet said that ta'adil arkan, that when you are praying, let me move this thing a little bit. Um, so when you're actually praying, you cannot move, have a complete movement. And this is a very common uh, problem that when you're making ruku, then you get up and you, you just go down. So as if you have a complete movement, that is not accepted. So when you're in the ruku, when you get up, you pause. 
You have to wait. Give is justice of this rukun. That's why it's called ta'adil al-arkan. Giving justice in saf, right? Justice to each posture. So if it's like this and like this, even in sajda, then you come back and you move back. Like a moving, if you're constantly moving, then your salah is not accepted. And according to some of the ulama, salah is just not accepted. Uh, majority of, I mean, good number of them, they say, it, this is wrong. You're not giving justice to each of the arkan. So even if, if you are running late and there's very little time, you're saying, Subhan Rabbil Azim, Subhan Rabbil Azim, Subhanallah, Liman Hamida, Rabbana wa Rakal Ham, then you go down. Don't go so. So you see people doing that and oftentimes we, we even uh, see our children and we don't tell them anything. So these are the things we have to remind them. Ta'adil um, arkan, justice to the, each posture is a condition of salah. Right, it's wajibat, but it's, it's something that, uh, that we often uh, neglect. Uh, and even between the sajda, someone they say, my knee is hurting, but I cannot pray properly, so I just have to quickly make sajda and come back and go. No, if your knee is hurting, get up, sit up, and pray on, you know, pray on the chair. But don't, Prophet Sallallahu said, the, the worst of the thief is that one who steals from the salah. And this is what stealing from the salah is. If your knee is hurting, then sit properly, sit on a place where you could pray. No one is telling you that you go through difficulty and you, 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 you steal something from salah, but you don't sit on the chair. You know, what kind of taqwa is this? Right? If you're having difficulty sitting on the floor, sit on the chair. But pray with khushu. Calm yourself down during the prayer. And make sure that we uh, complete all the arkan, inshallah. There are some questions. I'll end with this. Uh, and then if there are any, any questions here also in, the, in presence, uh, we could take that. Uh, and then we'll go through the whole detailed salah next week. The question is, when praying alone, do you say Rabbana uh, walakal hamd? after standing up from the ruku. Very good question. Uh, someone asked this question last week too, right? Or maybe somebody asked me elsewhere. The question that if you're praying alone, uh, when you go in the ruku, you say Allahu Akbar, and then you say Subhana Rabbi al Azim, or you could say the other duas, Subu'un Qudusun Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh. There are many duas Prophet Asim taught us, right? So we can learn that and we, we say that in the ruku. Then when you get up, Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. Meaning, Sami Allah. Allah listens. Liman Hamida, that person who praises Allah. That is, that is a statement. When we say Sami Allahu, Liman Hamida. For, for, liman, for those people who praises Allah, Allah listens to them. So, of course, you have to say, Rabbana walaka alhamd. Walaka shukra. Mila samawati wa mila ardi wa mila ma bayna wa mila ma bayna shi'at. These are the different ahadiths that you, of the praising of Allah at that moment. So the answer is yes. The Imam Sab, the Imam says it for us. He says, Sami Allahu liman hamida. So we sort of get used to by saying, Rabbana walakal hamd. But when you're praying alone, we say both. We say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. And we say, Rabbana walakal hamd as well. I've heard that you only say that only when you are praying behind an Imam. No, no, no. When you are praying behind the Imam, you don't have to say Sami Allahu liman hamida. Do you understand? When you're praying behind the Imam, you don't have to say Sami Allahu liman hamida because he's saying it for you. He says Sami Allahu liman hamida. Then we get up and we say Rabbana walakal hamd. Then he says Allahu Akbar. Then we say Allahu Akbar to ourselves. But when we are praying alone, we say both Sami Allahu liman hamida and we say Rabbana walakal hamd at the same time, inshallah. Um, we'll be ending in another minute. If you have any questions, uh, mashallah, we have 23 some people uh, uh, listening. If you have any questions, please type that up now. If not, uh, next week, inshallah, even if there are few people, we will do the uh, walkthrough of the step by step of Arkan. And what do we say both jahran uh, loudly and sirran quietly in the salah and we'll complete a two rakat salah. And then if there are any questions of the salah, I'm pretty sure there will be. Uh, someone also asked a question that uh, can there be a series of uh, kids uh, salah? I think there can be but uh, 
you know, what we are doing now, it's as basic as it is for both adults and children. I think it was just the tahara, there were some very uh, detailed questions, but I think for salah, uh, it is important that everyone listens as a family, uh, and then we can take benefit. Of course, uh, this salah is the essence of our deen. Uh, we should consider as is the essence of our existence, right? Uh, because salah is the most important thing for us, or it should be. And to relearn, or even if you know, to listen to it again, it is nothing but barakah, right? This majlis, what, you know, if, if the brothers and sisters, if they're watching at home, us learning about our deen is nothing but rewarding. And most importantly, at the same time, is if our, if our family members, our children are learning, it will become also a means for them to perfect their salah. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. There's no more questions, so inshallah, we'll end with dua. And then uh, we'll see you guys next week at 8.15 uh, after Ishan, Ishan Salah here uh, on ISB Life, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Any questions? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa tabarakta ya azal jalali wa ikram Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa hasni ibadatik Allah we ask that he Allah allow us to pray salah correctly Allah we ask that he Allah grant us the importance of salah Ya Allah Ya Allah allow us not to miss salah Ya Allah give us the importance of salah Ya Allah Prophet alayhi salam has mentioned that salah was the coolness of his eyes Ya Allah Ya Allah we ask that he Allah allow us to make salah the kunnas of our eyes, our, our eyes as well, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, the last words, the dying words of the Prophet ﷺ was salah and the importance of the salah and the safeguarding of salah. Ya Allah, we ask that Ya Allah make salah the most important thing and that salah is something that we not only follow but also bring many people around us to pray salah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are in the situation of lockdown. Ya Allah, allow each and every household to pray salah with jama'at, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask that Ya Allah make salah something that is the most important thing for the whole ummah, <coughs> Ya Allah. Ya Allah, salah is something that you will ask us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. One of the first questions will be regarding the salah. Ya Allah, we ask that Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please allow us, salah, allow us never to miss salah. At the same time, Ya Allah, grant us the khushu and the concentration of the salah and the devotion in salah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant the power of in our salah, Ya Allah, that, that which you have granted uh, to the Sahaba that if they need anything they would pray Salah and that you they would get the, from the, your treasures Ya Allah Ya Allah grant that khushu and that power in our Salah as well Ya Allah Ya Allah we ask that Ya Allah remove the remove the difficult time from, from the Ummah right now Ya Allah remove the pandemic of, of COVID-19 from the face of this world Ya Allah Ya Allah please accept our duas Allahumma taqabal minna inna kanta samin alim wa tub alayna inna kanta tawab rahim subhana rabbika rabbil izati wa maisifun wa salamun ala rabbil salim wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Zakum Lakir was salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.